What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Pubs, and today we're going to talk about the PS4 versus the Xbox One from a gamer's perspective, because to me, when buying a gaming console, it's about the actual gaming experience. I don't care about all the other stuff, all the other features. I just want the best console for the best gaming experience. So, first off, I got my Xbox One first. I got it about a month after the Xbox One was released. Prior to purchasing that, I was a long-time Xbox 360 user. I did have a PS3 for a while. I also got back into PC gaming about a year or so before the Xbox One came out. Um, but there was a big dilemma for me. I, I was thinking about going to the PS4 before I ever got the Xbox One. So why did I choose the Xbox One? Well, because that's where all my friends were. That's where I gamed for years was on Xbox. So it kind of made you know, the transition a lot easier. Where if I was to go to PS1, uh, PS1 if I was going to go to PS4, you know, it was a whole new start for me. Um, so yeah, so why did I end up getting a PS4 at some point? Well, honestly, Call of Duty. You know, Call of Duty went to the PS4 as its exclusive type of platform for its DLC and who they cater to. And I could tell you, uh, I have a theory that whoever gets these exclusive rights for, like, you know, uh, platform as far as, like, the DLC goes, it always seems that not only, you know, do you get the early releases, but the devs also cater to you. They make sure the game runs a lot better than that other console. I swear, especially with Call of Duty, I think it's, I think it's not just theory. I think it's the way they operate. I think it's like... You give us this fat check to get the exclusive rights to the DLC, and we'll make sure that your version runs a little better than the other guys. How does it sound to you? I, that's that's my theory, but I actually think it's true. So anyway, so here I am. I have both consoles, and yeah, what do you want? What do you want to know? You want to know which one do I think is actually better for gamers, right? The gaming console gives you best gaming experience. Well, it's easy. It's hands down, it's the PS4. Now I could easily say, well, sure, it's a stronger system. It was designed for gaming, you know? Um, you know, you play in a game like Black Ops 3, which has an exclusive deal with, you know, uh, PS4, PlayStation. So, of course, you know, you, you think they're going to cater to them, which I think they do. So, really, I'm being honest here. I'm not being a fanboy. I have both consoles. And currently, I have a membership on both. I'm playing games on both consoles. All my gaming buddies are on the Xbox One. Uh, I own a lot of games for the Xbox One, whereas on PS4, I own Rocket League, Advanced Warfare, and Black Ops 3. Plus, I have whatever free games I got each month, you know, a 2K16, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I have more games that I like to play on the Xbox One. You know, I have Battlefield 4, I have Hardline, I have a shit ton of CODs for Xbox One, plus some of the backwards compatibility now. Yeah, so what what is the dilemma you say? Like, well, what why not just have both? Keep both. Well, you know, honestly, it's kind of ridiculous if you think about it. Unless you have a lot of free time to play games on both consoles and a lot of extra money just to waste where you have to think about it like you're going to pay for yearly memberships that you're not going to use for a good chunk of the time on a certain console because you're going to buy a game let's just say you buy a game and you love the game right and you grind that game out for a month or two straight you're going to be playing that on one console that means you just threw away money on the other console because you have a membership the fact that you can't pause memberships kind of sucks because that's something you're going to see on the internet now. There's a lot of like these subscription services that I'm noticing now popping up. Like these clubs or these kind of subscription services where, you know, you join for a year or, you know, you pay monthly or whatever. But like you can pause your service at any time and they don't charge you and then you can just pick up where you left off. I think we need that when it comes to gaming. We need to be able to pause our service, our memberships. When you go on vacation, you're gone for a week or two, I want to pause my, I want to pause my service. Why should I not... You know, be able to pause that, right? Especially because they keep jacking up the prices. But I'm getting off my point here. So, what console is better for gaming? You know, I'm getting off top. I'm getting off topic. Here. What console is better for gaming? Obviously, it's the PS4. You know, call me a fanboy. Call me whatever you like. Um, when it comes to actual gaming, when it comes to actually getting the system booted up, 
getting in games, playing, uh, the way the system performs with games, how simplistic the dashboard is. The PS4, hands down. Everything is so streamlined on that system that even with all the added features to like bring it a little more in line with what the Xbox One offers as far as like the extras, all the entertainment bullshit, the apps, it's still so fast. It's so much faster to me. It's so much faster than the Xbox One dashboard. You know, when I jump between the two consoles, that's one of the things I notice right away is how much more fluid fluid the PS4 dashboard is compared to the Xbox One dashboard. Even with all the improvements the Xbox One has made since its release, it still hasn't caught up. And now with the 4.0 operating system coming out for uh, the PS4, I'm in the beta. I can tell you that it does seem even faster than it already was, which was already faster than the Xbox One. They did a little color tweaking on the dashboard. Um, they, they throw in some new features that I think are just going to uh, enhance the value of the PS4 to gamers. You know, the fact that you're going to be able to stream directly from your PS4 now at 60 frames per second at 720 to YouTube or Twitch or Daily Motion or whatever, whatever the platform you want. That's one of those three. That 60 FPS is a brilliant move. You know, the PS4 just has a lot of power. It just has a lot of power. The Xbox One, when it comes to gaming, it's already lacks that power. You know, it, it's not as the picture, the image is just not as sharp. It's not as clear. And you say, well, what does that matter when you're gaming? Well, when you're immersed in a game, it doesn't really matter. But when you go between the two and you say you're playing the same type of game, say, say like I have Advanced Warfare on, the, on both systems. You could tell the clarity of Advanced Warfare on the PS4 compared to this blurriness on the Xbox One. And the image is just, just sharper. You're able to see like enemies a little sharper, a little quicker. It's, it is kind of interesting. Like, you know, you don't think of like, oh, whatever, it can't be that big of a difference. But the fact that a lot of these games on Xbox One, I think for the most part, all the games, if I'm, staying correct, if I, you know, if I'm not wrong, is that none of them run a 1080p. Right? At least none of the first-person shooters do. None of them do. They run at like nine something, nine hundred or nine sixty or some shit like that. Whereas the X, the uh, PS4 is giving you, for the most part, most games are in 1080p. So, you know, you so you're getting, you're not getting any stupid upscaling. You know, it's it's the way the game was meant to be experienced. You know, and I'm not going to get into the debate. This the debate has nothing to do with PC because we're not going to go there. But so what am I rambling on about? If you're a gamer and your whole goal is the best gaming experience, I'm not being a fanboy here, I own both consoles, it's the PS4. Especially if you're into Call of Duty now, the fact that they have these exclusive deal with PlayStation, they obviously cater to the PlayStation network to make sure the game runs the most efficient. And also too, here's a big one. Here is a big one. When it comes down to player base of no matter what game it is, if it's a cross-platform game, not a cross-platform, but if the game is available on both platforms, being PS4 or Xbox One, the player base, the overall player base for those games is much higher on the PS4. Now, I will, one caveat, caveat to that is that the, the global player base the PS4, yes, is higher than Xbox One because they sold more units. But when it comes to North America, it's about even. No, uh, when it comes to North America, the the amount of people playing a particular game is pretty much even between Xbox and PS4. I'll just say that, all right? PS4 is really not region locked, whereas Xbox does kind of lock regions, which for certain games, you can kind of see uh, the benefit of being region locked versus not being region locked. Uh, but that's where something like the Net Duma comes in handy, I think. And I'm going to be making a video about the Net Duma and why I think the Net Duma is great. I don't know if this video really helped you guys at all, really, because I just rambled on about why I think the PS4 is just a better gaming platform for gamers, because that's why I buy a gaming console, not an entertainment console. 
Anyway, I'm your boy Pubs. Get what console, whatever console you like, whatever one. If you're a person that wants a multi-purpose console and you gotta have a multi-reason why you're spending X amount of dollars, just can't be on gaming, then the Xbox One is for you. But if you want a fluid gaming experience, which is built for gaming, it's a more powerful system, the PS4 is for you. Anyway, I'm your boy Pubs. I rambled on long enough. I hope you liked this video. Peace, until next time, I'm out.